when I was five, this is when my mother decided I better go to school. And she enlisted me into a French school, public school, in not far in Paris. The funniest thing that ever happened to me is that I never really knew my last name. Uh, in the church, in the Russian community, you walked around and uh, they all, all knew me as Greggy. Okay, Greggy. Uh, so I came to school, my first school in Paris, in French. And the teacher asked me, Et quel est ton nom? Greggy. Mais ton nom de famille? Greggy. Mais vous avez une famille? Oui. Quel est le nom? Je dis, uh, so she finally sent a note to my mother. And the next day, I was taught how to pronounce Gagarin. <laughs> that was my most memorable and most embarrassing time. That school was interesting. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I went through it. Uh, liked the teachers and liked the, my classmates. And even though I was still speaking French with a Russian accent, uh, however, I almost forgot all of my Russian because the emphasis on learning French. Came the summertime, my mother just found out about this Russian school in Paris and near Boulogne and uh, decided she would look into it and transfer me there. Basically, it was run as an entirely, as if it were a Russian school. I mean, everything was in Russia, mathematics, you had to learn Russian history, the grammar, the language, and so forth. But to operate in France, you also had to learn French history and French grammar and be able to pass French language examinations. So, and one language which was also taught was Latin, which of course was very helpful later on. And. Uh, so it was a busy curriculum, uh, a lot of things to learn and put together, but uh, we managed to do it. Yes, they had music instruction, especially singing, choral stuff, and I flunked singing. I was told that uh, an elephant stepped on my ear. There was one Russian game called Lapta, which we, which was sort of a rudimentary type of baseball. And uh, the school was only about a block away from the Bois de Boulogne. So on nice days like today here, we used to go to the Bois de Boulogne and uh, uh, play there. Another thing in France, Thursdays was a half day school and Saturdays was a half day school. So we went to school six days a week, but those two days were half days. And during those half days is when you did a lot of the extra stuff, uh, including some as needed going to church or playing lapta in the park or whatever. Now Sundays, was, you were on your own, but that's when you were, usually you went to the church anyway. As I mentioned, I had almost forgotten Russian, being in a French school, and to the man who got me back talking Russian was a teacher by the name of Grigory Petrovich. I think Zubov was his last name. And uh, in 1934, when I was I left, I left that school, he gave me a copy of a Russian book of Gogol's, complete works of Gogol's, which he had, uh, and uh, he assigned it, his own name to it and says, please, it's yours. And uh, I could tell that it had been engraved with his name on it, and that he uh, had somebody put my name on it. Next year, uh, my mother decided, well, she wanted to get rid of me during the summer, I mean, both for her 
and if I pass, we let's see if we can't park Greg someplace and enjoy life peacefully. But so she heard about this school in uh, Eastbourne, England, on the shores uh, of the of the uh, English Channel, and uh, where they would teach French boys or any foreigners English summer school. Uh, I stayed there for like, I guess it was six weeks or so, and. Um, tried to learn English. The only problem was there was another boy from France there who also was trying to learn English, but the two of us spoke French beautifully. And so in light, we got glued together. But still, I learned enough English to go by. By the way, let's talk about my grandmother a minute. She, uh, she stayed in Russia, and in 19... Finally, in 1933, 34, my father and his brother Serge, who was already here in the States, said, gee, let's see if we can't get grandmother out of there. Because she's alone. I mean, there's nobody to take care of her. She had uh, one son who had been imprisoned, and he was released and got married and changed his name. and. So he was persona non grata, and she didn't want to make matters worse for him. Uh, she had a daughter who married a military guy, and they were they did not want to associate with Princess Marie Gagarin, and uh, and vice versa. They understood perfectly well the situation. So my uncle Serge and my father said, well, let's see what we can do. They went to the Soviet consulate in New York. In total, I think it cost my father and his brother close to $500 in those days to get a mother out of Russia. And then finally she got the passage to the United States. I arrived here. And early 34, and uh, I, I arrived that summer. She, she, she'd been here about two, three months or four months by then. Uh, actually, no, I think it made me understand Russia a little bit better. I learned more about Russia from her than I did about anything America. I mean, we took America for granted, the land of the free. Uh, we're here. And the picture you saw with the three dogs, that was taken at that time when we had three dogs. And uh, the fact that she could sit there in the open air, it was just news to her and play with these dogs. Who had three dogs in Russia? They, the two would have been eaten. No, it was a uh, very educational moment for me. That next school year, my mother had arranged, she didn't send me back to the uh, Russian school, but she arranged for me to go to a boarding school in Switzerland. Parked me in this very lovely, well I should say lovely, but strict uh, school in Fribourg, Switzerland, uh, run by the Catholic Church. and. Uh, it, and I was extremely well accepted by my classmates, teachers, and everybody. I really had a ball there. When I first came, went to St. Paul School in Garden City, when I high, basically started high school. I mean, they gave me a little bit of a test because they didn't quite know from my Russian, French, Swiss education which niche do I fit into. And uh, uh, so they just started me in high school. And I was amazed that I only had four classes. Every afternoon, there was uh, uh, the sport of the time, be it basketball, baseball, uh, uh, soccer, football. I mean, I never 
even knew football, American football existed. No? But so I, I participated in, in uh, so intramural basketball, my height being of some help and stuff like that. But uh, that, that was the organized type of thing which did not exist in Europe. Now one of the things that did ha did, we did do is father having those stables. He asked me, he was quite open, he said, why don't you invite one or two of your classmates who may be interested in horses to come and ride with you? And I did. And uh, two boys, which I liked very much, and they came and we, and my father taught them how to ride uh, without any tuition involved. And uh, um, we became friends for two or three years. So there was a little bit of both. The European type, do as you wish type thing, and then the organized sports.